Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Billy Indiana. It's already February 11th, but today I'm finally getting around to filming my What Games Did I Play in January 2023? So if you're curious to see what at the table at the Webb household, stay tuned. Well, it is Super Bowl weekend, and while the Rams didn't have a great season and didn't even make the playoffs, they did win the Super Bowl last year. So kind of reminiscing and re reflecting on how great that was when they won last year. Also, just a quick announcement again, update. Down below, you can see a link to the World Series of Board Gaming website. And I got to go last September. They're having it again this September in, in uh, Las Vegas. If you're curious to go, you can check out their website. You can watch my video that I'll link up here above and see if it's something that's of interest to you. And if you decide you want to purchase a ticket, you can use my referral code also listed down below, Billy Indiana, and get a discount. All right. In January 2023, I played 40 different gameplays, which is about my goal. I'm trying to hit about 500 in a year. And so if I, you know, 40 a month would be 480. And so if I can get pretty close to 40 or a little over every month, I know some months will be higher and some lower. Usually the summer is pretty good. Um, I can usually reach that goal. So 40 gameplays in January. I had 25 different games, 12 of which were new to me. And I'm going to recount them kind of in backwards order and tell you just a real brief thing about each one. All right, first one. It is a new one that I don't own, and so I'll show a picture up here on the screen, and it is Woodcraft, a Vladimir Suki game. And I really love this. Um, it was, I, it's been in a video earlier this year, I'm talking about one of my top games of 2022. I played it actually in 2023 after the turn of the year, but um, it was a great game from 2022. I really enjoy the way the mechanisms integrate. I love the, the kind of thematic um, gluing the dice together, cutting the dice apart to build the furniture out of wood. Really an excellent game that I loved. Just played it once that one time. Another game that I played one time in January was a game that I played before but also don't own and that's Scout. And I've probably played this one five or six or seven times now with a variety of different groups. Always goes over well. It's always a fun game. Really easy to play. Really easy to learn. Nice hand management game where you're trying to um, get rid of all your cards before everybody else does. You play a certain number of rounds, but you can't reorder the cards that are in your hand. So a really unique game, Scout, that a lot of people are loving. Next up, another game that I just played once, but this one is one that I actually own, and that is Planet Unknown. Planet Unknown is a polyomino game that I really enjoy. One of my top, top games of, of uh, 2022 as well. And in this one, you got a nice lazy Susan in the middle of the table that holds all the polyominoes, and you're pulling them out and putting them on your world board, trying to build out the planet. And sometimes you want to match the different terrains in certain ways. Sometimes you have to put them adjacent, but then you can break that rule if you develop up the tech tracks, which are on the personal player boards. Just a lot of really cool things that go on in Planet Unknown. I should probably make a review for that game. I've played it a lot of times now and talked about it quite a few times, but never given a review, so I should do that. Next up is another game that I don't own, and this one I just played on BGA, and that is Paint the Roses. A lot of people love it, but at least playing it on BGA, I didn't. Uh, it was just okay. It's a deduction game, which isn't really one of my favorite styles of game anyway. And I think doing it on BGA, you, you don't get that table talk and interaction that I think would make this game special. And so, and we played it asynchronous, so it's kind of, you play a move and then you're waiting, you know, hours or a day and then, I don't know, it just didn't, didn't really hit for me. I know a lot of people love it and I do feel like if I played it in person, I probably would have enjoyed it quite a bit better. So didn't hate it, didn't love it. That's Paint the Roses. Next up, a game that I did love and a game that I do own and also played in January, Oros. And I was hoping to play this more than I did, only I was able to play kind of a solo kind of walkthrough to make sure I could remember the rules, played with my wife. Tried to get into the game group a couple times and it just kept falling through either because of player count being over four or other games that we had already chosen to play. Um, took it to the Saturday game day, but there were so many games to choose from and most people hadn't really heard of this one. So this one wasn't super high ranked in terms of people wanting to play. But I know I'll eventually get this played with my game group. I do want to play through solo some of the different AIs because there's four different AIs that play very strategically in different ways. So Oros is a, an interesting game where you're placing tiles out that are Actually, you're, you're moving and sometimes placing tiles out onto the world map and they're colliding and creating volcanic eruptions and creating mountains and you're playing a demigod sending out followers to create temples and shrines and you're trying to uh, work your demigod statue up the ziggurat ascension track to, as kind of the timer of the game, but there's tech tree kind of a situation where you're building up your abilities also as you go along the game for your followers. So uh, really an interesting game, very unique, looks unique, plays unique, 
uh, uniquely. And so Oros, a great game by Esh Games and Brent Brinkerhoff. All right, next up, another game that I don't own and just played on BGA, Next Station London. And Next Station London I enjoyed. I think I would probably prefer to play it in person again, just on the board itself instead of online. But I did like the implementation online and the fact that it kind of shows you what all your options are so you don't miss something you might not see otherwise. Like as you kind of hover around, you can kind of see, oh, that'll work, this'll work. Um, I only played it the one time and I enjoyed it. I didn't play super strategically because I the first couple turns I didn't hadn't read the rules yet, so I was just kind of guessing what we were trying to do. And then I, I forget if I read the rules or watched a little video playthrough and started thinking, oh, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. And, and so I kind of got up to a slow start, but I enjoyed it. Um, not something I would just run after, but if anyone wanted to play it, I'd be happy to, both online or in person. Next up, a, a really great one for me, one that I don't own, but I played on that game day on that Saturday a few weeks back, and that is Mosaic, A Story of Civilization. Huge, grand game. It was the Kickstarter collector's edition kind of deal. So it had all the big minis, all the fancy pieces. It covered a gigantic circular table with five of us playing, and there was barely any room left on the table. And I even had a few pieces sitting on a chair beside me. Uh, so a really grand, big game, but a civilization building game. And there's some area control, but there's also some kind of tag multiplication in the cards that you earn and play throughout the game. So really a lot of different ways you can go about trying to earn points. It was a longer game, but it was with five of us and uh, only one of us had ever played before. So a uh, really great time. I enjoyed Mosaic. Next up was Las Vegas, another one that I don't own and one that we played on that Saturday. Uh, dice rolling, you're choosing which dice and, and there's some strategy to when you want to choose the dice and bid on certain um, money winning options out there in the, in the kind of collection in the middle. And so you're trying to generally go for the ones where you could win the most money, but so is everybody else. And so you're if you roll threes, you might put them here, but then if someone rolls more threes, they're going to take it away from you. And ties basically cancel for everybody, so no one gets the money. It was an interesting little game. Again, not one that I would just want to run back to. I don't think I would ever go out and purchase it, but always be happy to play it. That was Las Vegas. Next up, a game that I didn't have much interest in playing prior. It's it's a wonderful world. And played this one also on BGA. Um, I don't know, something about the cover just never appealed to me. And the gameplay sounded okay, but I never really quite clicked. I never watched kind of a playthrough. Um, but we tried it on BGA, and I actually really enjoyed it. I don't, again, still know that I would go out and buy it, but I'd be happy to play it on BGA. Um, and it's, it's um, again, you're, you're collecting tags and patterns and trying to build those patterns to sort of build an engine and develop um, your ability to gain resources so that you can buy more cards and then uh, get in-game scoring based on the colors and tags of the cards that you have. And I like engine building games, so I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I would be happy to play it in, in a regular board game form, uh, but I don't know that I would go buy the board game just to play it. I feel like there's a lot of other games that I enjoy that also have that kind of engine building feel, but I would always be happy to play it, both in board game and VGA form. Next up was Imhotep, and I played Imhotep Duel. Um, I think, I, yeah, I got it over here on the shelf, the shelf somewhere. My wife and I like Imhotep Duel fine. Not one of our favorite games necessarily, but got to play the base game, the original game on BGA with a, a group, four players. I enjoyed it. Um, you're choosing whether to put stones on your boat or whether you're shipping the boat out to um, basically accomplish building a pyramid or building statues or taking cards that would give you kind of special abilities, either instantly or in-game scoring. And it was clever. I enjoyed it. Again, not one that I'd probably just run out and buy real quick. It's a Phil Walker Harding game, I believe. Um, so fun game. Always be happy to play it. I play it again on BGA as well. Um, yeah, it was a nice game. Not not like a world beater for me, but it was good. Next up, Heat Pedal to the Metal. Played this one on that Saturday. Again, not one I own. So I'm showing a bunch of pictures up here on the screen so you can see an image of the box. But this is one, again, that a lot of people, it was kind of the hotness. I think it kind of still is. It's hard to get. A lot of people are loving it. And I enjoyed it. Um, I think it's better, in my opinion, than Downforce. But I would rather own Downforce because I think Downforce is easier to teach. And that's the kind of game I would not really want. I'm not into racing games that much, so I wouldn't really play that just to play a game with my gaming group or my family. Um, I would probably play those kind of games more with people who just don't play games very much. But I think the racing theme might draw them in. So, And Heat, I think, is a little too complicated for that group, or at least more complicated than Downforce. So I enjoyed it. I would be happy to play it again. I don't think I'll ever buy it because, again, I'm not crazy about racing games. And I think it was a little more complex than the time when I would personally use racing games to play. 
Next up is Gaia Project, and I played this one on BGA. I played this one on Steam. Um, I have played this one on the on the regular board game as well, but I don't own it. And Gaia Project is like Terra Mystica. If you've played that, um, you're sending energy around in this circle and you have to activate those energies before you can use them and then you can use them to take different actions and you're also trying to build out mines and, and research centers and things on planets that you're exploring on the board and cluster them together in federations and there's round scoring um, goals and there's end of game scoring goals and those are different every game and there's also uh, asymmetric factions that you play as that give you different starting uh, features and also different abilities throughout the game so really a, a deep game. I enjoyed it a lot. It's got a pretty big rules overhead. So it's I think it's a heavy game both in its rules overhead and in the complexity of gameplay and trying to think how everything fits together. But I really enjoyed it and uh, always happy to play it. I almost kind of would rather to play it online just because when you play it with the board game, there's a lot of pieces and you're moving the, in the energy things around. I, I liked it and I wouldn't shy away from playing it as the board game. But I think playing it in the digital version just kind of made some things easier. <laughs> Did all the bookkeeping for you. So I kind of enjoyed that maybe slightly better than the board game, but both are terrific. Gaia Project. Next up, played A Feast for Odin. Don't own this one either. I've played the regular board game, and then this month we played it on VGA. And enjoy it. Uh, I, when I played the first one with the real board, the regular board game, I, I played with the Norwegians expansion. It was my first time, so I was a bit overwhelmed um, trying to figure out how everything fit together. Even this time playing on VGA, I'm still not quite sure, I, I'm, I am quite sure I'm not playing a highly strategic game. I'm sure I'm not choosing the best options. And the one thing negative about some of the digital implementations, like I just played a terrible move on the Feast for Odin because I was in a hurry and I thought I was clicking the place where I could mimic someone else's action and I actually clicked something else that helped me not at all and burned three of my workers for that turn. So it killed me on this round. Uh, wasted three workers and it's so important to use your workers wisely and I'm not necessarily using that wisely anyway and I just burned three of them for nothing so that was a frustrating move that's kind of a downside of some of the online things I wouldn't have been able to make a mistake like that with the regular board game but I am enjoying it again it's not one that I love I'm, I know some people it's like their favorite game of all time um, I enjoy it I think it's a good game it's a solid game I like the number of choices and the variability of the game there's just, it just for some reason doesn't click as like a game that I love. It's a game that I like. And so I'm enjoying A Feast for Odin, enjoying playing it online, and would always be happy to play it. Next up, another one that we played on BGA, and it was some, my first time, and that's Dinner in Paris. Um, Dinner in Paris is interesting. You're trying to um, build out a patios basically in front of restaurants that you build. And so you have to get the resources to build the restaurant, and then you have to build out the patios in front of the restaurant to try to accomplish certain goals like surrounding lampposts or gardens or things like that. So there's a little bit of area control or, uh, yeah, kind of you're trying to control the area around places, beat people to it, basically. Um, it was fine. Uh, again, a game that I enjoyed. Um, wouldn't really go out of my way to play it online or the game, actual game, I don't think. Um, I mean, if someone said, hey, let's play it, I would say sure. But I, it's not one that I love. So Dinner in Paris is just fine. Next up, played Cascadia. Cascadia is one that I've, it's probably one of my most played games all time. I'm, I'm sure I'm closing in on 100 game plays for Cascadia between the online implementation, the solo version that you can play on the GitHub page, um, and then just having the game myself. It's, I love it. I am, because I'm closing in on 100 plays, I'm not necessarily as inclined to just pull it off the shelf right now, unless it's uh, wanting to teach someone, because it's pretty easy to teach and it's beautiful. And I love the combination of choosing a tile and choosing a token and how you can then use the acorns as your bonuses to either mix up choosing a token that doesn't match the tile or just like clearing the tokens and, and then choosing a different one you know, later. So I like a lot of things about this game. It's pretty simple and it's beautiful. So Cascade, I continue to love it. Played it a couple times in January. Next up, play a few times, and only on BG, I've actually given away my physical copy to my daughter because she she loves it, and I'm kind of, I wouldn't say burned out of it, but I wouldn't pull it off the shelf, and that's Azul. I know, again, Azul is some people's favorite game. They love it. They've played all the different expansions. I've only ever played base Azul, and I like it. It's fun. I, I can see the appeal. Always happy to play it. Played it several times online because it's pretty quick to play online, generally speaking. Played on BGA. Um, yeah, it's a great game. But I did actually give it away because, again, my daughter loves it, and it was just okay for me after I played it a dozen times or so. Next up, Architects of the West Kingdom. I know, again, this is another one that people just absolutely love. Some of them are top 10 games of all time. Uh, me, I played it, I don't know, a dozen times, 15 times. 
and it's fine. I like it. Uh, I always have to play it, but I, I actually traded away my copy as well of that game, just, you know, keeping the culling a little bit to keeping the collection within somewhat of a reasonable, I don't know, my wife might not agree me, with me that it's reasonable, uh, but Architects of Us Kingdom played it again, uh, played the board game in person, friends copy, enjoyed it. Yeah, it's fun, uh, just not one of my favorites. Next up, one of my favorite experiences, playing Pokemon the Trading Card Game Battle Academy. <laughs> I uh, don't own this one, but my granddaughter does, and she taught me how to play. And that was really fun, because I've taught my grandkids how to play a lot of games, and for her to teach me a game, and she was excited about it, a game that she plays a lot with her dad, that was a lot of fun. And uh, so, really enjoyed the Pokemon Trading Card Game Battle Academy, and getting to play that in January. Next up, Great, Great Western Trail, second edition. Um, don't own this game either, and it's a game that I enjoy, but don't love, so I've never bought it. Playing it on BGA a couple times in January. Um... I'm not good at this game, and maybe that's part of why I just enjoy it but don't love it. I, I don't know. I, I like the movement of the game. I like the mechanisms of the game. I, for some reason, the strategies just don't click in my brain for whatever reason, like some other games do better. So it's fine. I like it. I'm always happy to play it, but probably will never buy it. <laughs> Next up is Wingspan. Uh, Wingspan, I actually have, let me see if I can roll the correct direction here. So I've got the nesting box here. I uh, have all the expansions. I've yet to, I have the Asia expansion that, with the two-player version, and we're coming up on a break in about a week and a half, uh, actually just a week. Uh, so excited to maybe try that one with my wife, that duet mode. But I did play Wingspan, oh, just the regular game, over this month of January a couple times, and enjoy it. Again, it's, it's one of those games that um, I think it's great for teaching people who have played a few games. I wouldn't teach it to new players who are just learning about modern board games, but some who have played a few want to try an engine builder. Um, it's not my favorite in that genre, but I do really like it. And um, yeah, I'm excited to try the duet mode, but played a couple times of Wingspan in January. Next up, just kind of a classic and one that I do own. Didn't actually play this version. I just played Base Europe, but I don't actually have Base Europe personally. So, um, but Ticket to Ride, classic game. Um, don't pull it off the shelf that often, but every once in a while, I just want to scratch that itch of playing an old classic. And this is the Asia game pack or uh, like board pack. What do they call it? Um, it's like an expansion map collection is what they call it. So um, yeah, and this is actually probably my favorite map collection that I own. I only own a couple, but the Asia is really nice. Enjoy that one and uh, played Ticket to Ride a bit in January. Next up, a new one to me actually won this game, won two games from the same company in a little uh, contest, I think it was Instagram, and Sunset Over Water, pencil first game. Oh no, I think actually this was from Board Game Coffee's Christmas contest, and I won the pencil game, pencil first games bundle. I believe that's where it came from. Um, and Sunset Over Water, nice little pocket game. This is the pocket edition. I actually think I'd probably enjoy the regular edition better just because the art is really beautiful, and I'd rather have a little bit bigger cards to see the art better, um, but it's nice. You have these different, pictures and you're moving your player around on this grid of pictures and they all have little icons on them and so you're trying to collect certain icons to satisfy orders for people who want to purchase your photographs i think that's the theme um, and you can move in different directions depending on when you wake up in the day so if you wake up early you might have um, you get to go first but you might not be able to move in the direction you really prefer if you wake up later in the day you go second and so some things might be gone that you want but you maybe have more variety it just kind of depends from card to card so you're choosing when you're going to wake up and move your worker um, i've only played it two players in solo so far but i enjoyed it played it four or five times several times solo a couple times with my wife um cute little game and uh, i don't think it's one we'll play a ton but it's a nice little game i enjoyed it next up concordia one of my favorite games and playing this one on Steam and getting ready to, again, on our vacation, pull out Solitaria so we can try the co-op version. Might even try to squeeze in a solo game sometime while my wife's reading her book or something over the break. Uh, but Concordia, I know some people say it's dry. I love it. Uh, a lot of people do love this game. This is the Salta expansion box, and I almost always use the Salta expansion. I think, actually, in this box, all I have is maps. And then in the other box, I've got all the actual game components, including the Salta. Uh, played Venus before as well. I'd like to try the Venus Team Edition. Haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, but really love Concordia. Got to play it several times in January. Mostly on Steam in January. We're going to be playing it with the actual board game here, hopefully next week during break. 
Next up, one that I don't own, but that I have pre-ordered a new version of, and I do love it, and that is Castles of Burgundy. I've played Castles of Burgundy a lot on VGA. I've played it with my friend and his copy. I've played it on Steam, and played it, I think, in January just on VGA, and played it several times, but really love Castles of Burgundy. Can't wait for the special edition. Hopefully, it's going to come this summer. Um, Castles of Burgundy is just a great Feld game where you're rolling the dice, and then you're choosing how you're going to use those dice. Um, whether you're going to use it to take tiles off of the main board in the middle and store them or whether you're going to take them out of your storage and put them on your map and you're trying to also capitalize as you put them on the map to fill up the different terrains so maybe the whole green terrain and the sooner you fill up those little terrain conglomerations or little collections uh, the more points you earn uh, it's a very thinky game love it one of my favorites castles of burgundy but the most played game in january was another part of that pencil first that I won, and that is Herbaceous. This is the Pocket Edition, and my wife actually even loved it more than me. I enjoyed it quite a bit. She really loved it, and, and I kept it for now, but she's going to take it to school, so she has it to play with students and some of her friends that she teaches with there during breaks, during lunch, or maybe even after school. Really fun game, but again, this is one I think I would rather have the regular version, not the Pocket Edition, because of the art. The art's beautiful, and on the the cards here, the, it's just the art with no explanation, no terminology, so you don't see the names of the plants or anything uh, on this version. So I, I think, again, I, I'd rather have the non-pocket version, but the gameplay doesn't change. And there's a little expansion for both of these, actually. They came with little mini expansions. Played them both solo, played them both with my wife, tried the expansions. Uh, really cute, you get an herb biscuit if you accomplish a certain goal on this one by filling up your little glass jar. So some cute things about her Herbaceous or Herbaceous. Uh, great game, played that one the most in the month of January. So there you have it. Those are the games that I played in January. So what were my top games? I usually try to pick my favorite game that was new to me and my favorite game that wasn't new. The favorite game that was new to me was Mosaic. And it's close between that one and Woodcraft. Those were both terrific. Don't own either one, but probably at some point might own both. Although, I don't know, Mosaic is so big, I'm not sure how often I'd play it. And so for the cost that it would be to invest in the game, I'm not sure if I would buy it, but I would play it anytime. It is so much fun. Really enjoyed it. So that's my favorite new to me game. My favorite game that wasn't new to me, it's close between these two. Concordia is up there, but I would have to go with Oros. And it's somewhat new to me, but I, I played it during the development of the game and had a chance to see a pretty much finished copy playing it online. And now I've played it in person a few times. And so it's almost new to me, but um, really enjoyed this one a lot in January. Can't wait to play it more. So this is my favorite not new to me game, uh, but Concordia is right there too. Concordia is a classic that I love. So what about you? What were your favorite games in January that you played? Maybe tell me your favorite that was new to you and your favorite that was not new. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up and it'd be terrific if you'd choose to subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. This is Bill Indiana signing off. Oh.